Hello YouTube and welcome to the Indie Evolution channel. I'm Endgamer. Uh, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Age of Decadence. The Age of Decadence. Um, this is a new turn-based classic RPG um, made by the development studio Iron Tower. And uh, it's got a, an interesting approach. Like I said, it's turn-based. You don't see those too often anymore. Um, it's set in kind of a world that is post the fall of the Roman Empire I believe is is kind of what they're what they're shooting for like I said I haven't really been into the game yet so I, I can't tell you but from what I've read <coughs> uh, that's the that's kind of the backdrop of this game um, it's light on magic um, kind of a more realistic world and obviously the title uh, age of decadence probably um, draws its draws its inspiration from that period, the decadent period of the Roman Empire that, that led to its fall. So uh, we're going to go ahead and click to start a new game. It does give you a quick, quick disclaimer here uh, and let you know that the, the combat difficulty of this game is, is very hard uh, and does take time to master. Um, for the purposes of the demo, uh, there is an awesome mode where you can start with a already battle-hardened veteran. Um, which is a pre-made character or you can go with the the normal mode and create your own character from scratch from from the ground up uh, which is going to make for a much more difficult combat experience because every character in this game uh, as with any role-playing game D&D &D, what have you uh, you know you start out as kind of a bottom barrel just regular regular kind of guy so we're going to go ahead and try normal so we can get into the character creation screen. Um, I did previously, I did about a 30-40 minute video that goes over all the options in the character creation screen. As you can see, it's, it's quite robust. There's quite a bit here. Um, there's also something that makes the character avatar appear darker than normal and I think that's in the graphic options that's uh, one of the check boxes that you check that causes that that kind of little error I'm sure that'll be fixed by the time the game is released um, for our purposes here though we're just gonna go over very quickly uh, I went through all the backgrounds in the other video uh, I was partial to lore master grifter and merchant um, and I think at the end of the day I'm gonna still kinda on the fence between lore master and merchant um, but I think at the end of the day, the lore master, uh, to me, sounds like the more, more interesting path. Um, so that's what I'm going to choose. And you can see as I, as I pick lore master, it fills in a large portion of my character character sheet for me. It gives me kind of a template for my physical and mental statistics, and it also gives me a fair amount of of my combat skills so on and so forth um, let's just go ahead since this is the character we're going to be playing uh, lore master preserving and understanding pre-war knowledge and technology is a lucrative business an increasing number of people see their salvation in the ashes of the past and thus the market is becoming saturated with icons and objects from the old empire most without any real value Always on the lookout for something of real worth, cataloging and appraising items, lore masters remain at the front line of this trade. So a lore master, to me, is kind of a just all-around ad adventurer. Um, you know, it, 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 we're going to be crawling through uh, dungeons looking for artifacts, this kind of thing. That's how I view the you the lore master he's kind of an I made this reference in the other video he's kind of an Indiana Jones Laura Croft uh, archetype is at least the way I see it um, not to go outside of the RPG world for my references but that's that's how I view this character um, we can see my character now after that choice obviously lore um, is my highest skill. It's the knowledge and understanding of events long gone, ancient languages, ri forgotten rituals, and mysterious objects. It's always a winner in a post-apocalyptic world. Um, not sure how that actually ends up playing into the game, but we will we will hopefully find that out. 
Uh, my other high stats are in alchemy. alchemy. Um, this is always an interesting skill to me in games. The mystical art of transforming mundane, organic, and non-organic elements into magical items. I think this is really where the game's magic kind of plants its flag is in the quasi-magical world of alchemy. Um, so I am going to just throw a couple points into alchemy. I want also to have my lore, which is kind of my bread and butter skill. I want to boost that a little bit. Uh, it seems like for my character, lock picking would also be something of importance. Um, it seems like I would also come in contact with traps. Um, my character's not really much on charisma. But good on perception, which should boost me with ranged weaponry. Um, and it looks like I'm already kind of in the in the crossbow pool here. Um, weapon synergy gives various bonuses to all other weapon skills. Reflecting. Oh, so there's kind of a weapon sim synergy system here, whereas I increase my crossbow skill it actually gives me um, some kind of apparent bonus the number shown in the total amount of SP added to each skill through synergy effects okay so it actually boosts other skills of mine as well and I don't know if that goes for um, some of these other skills as well but uh, doesn't look like I'm I actually want my character to have more in the way of dexterity and I think I'm actually probably going to make a foolish move and trade constitution uh, for dexterity. Uh, actually I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be using ranged weapons. I think I'll go I think I'll keep the, the statistics the way they are. Um, don't really want to go steal. And let's just continue to increase alchemy and I guess I guess we'll just kind of stick with our bread and butter here uh, which are our general general skills I don't know if this is going to end up being an effective character in this game or not kind of hard for us to see our avatar but I like the bald head kind of a cool little beard there and so that is our, our lore master, and he, he seems pretty well equipped to to go out there and, and hunt for the relics of the of the lost empire, of the fallen empire. Uh, probably be equipping ourselves with a crossbow as, as soon as possible. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with our with our skills here. So let's go ahead and accept. And this is just, guys, this is just a blind playthrough to give you an idea of what your experience might be when you first pick up this demo, which I'll, I'll, I'll list the demo, demo's link um, in the comments section of the, in the description section of the video so that anybody who wants to check it out most certainly can. And this is our opening here. Your adventure starts in Tehran, a small crumbling town far away from the main tracks of travelers and caravans. It's been dying for the last hundred years or so, kept alive only by the combined efforts of its inhabitants. Broken stonework has been replaced by makeshift wooden construction, creating the impression that a new town is slowly emerging from the ruins of the old one. Much like Tehran, the noble house controlling the town has seen better days. Before the war that toppled the empire and devastation that ensued, House Daraton was one of the most powerful houses, but that was then and times have changed. Today it barely has enough strength to maintain its hold over local guilds. As a child you loved listening to the stories about the old days filled with the gods fighting alongside men, power wielding magi, more demigods than human, and monsters conjured by cowardly Quintare. Quintare. So when an opportunity presented itself, you signed up as an apprentice to a local lore master named Fing. Lore masters have always been in demand. 
While the future offers little, the past is rich and ripe for the taking. You just need to know where to dig and what to do with it. And that's where lore masters came in. The master, to master their craft, they dug through ruins, copied ancient manuscripts, often without understanding them, traded bits and pieces of pre-war knowledge, and appraised anything that looked old. While the Magi are long gone, the machines they built still remain, and lore masters are the only ones who may have the knowledge to bring them back. So it seems like the Magi in this game are also associated with machinery, not just maybe standard sorcery. I'm going to be interested to find out what form magic takes, because there, there isn't really any options to create a what I would consider to be a standard mage um, in the character creation, so... Uh, as you can tell, this is classic RPG all the way, um, so there's gonna, it's going to be very text-heavy um, as you proceed through the game, which I, I personally enjoy. And now you can kind of get a look at our, our character for the first time, really. I made him kind of a, you can see, kind of a balding, you know, guy with a little kind of funny mustache there. Uh, you can get kind of a look at the game world here. Uh, does a good job. This is the this is the town um, that they describe verbally or or with written words uh, in the beginning. You know, it's it's downtrodden. You can see the that this is an area that's seen better days. So. text is, uh, well the text in the actual game screen, it might have to do with this is, uh, I'm running it in my native resolution, uh, which is pretty high, uh, so that might account for the very small text on the screen, but we can see in our bottom left hand corner here, uh, it just tells me it's Fing's desk, notes, candles, and writing materials. It appears that Fing is interested in General Marcellus Galbo, a famous military tactician and strategist of the old empire. So it does give us quite a bit of information. And I'm not finding a way to work the camera um, in a different, to a different angle. Uh, so we're going to have to look at some controls here. Uh, I'm just clicking around, getting descriptions. This just tells me that this is a bedside table. Um, that nothing of interest. Old linen chest. pile of a sort of junk of varying uselessness. Oh, wait a second. It is a large, carefully restored document tracing the history of House Daraton throughout the centuries. Turns out the house owes its name to the Battle of Daraton. That makes sense. Where a certain Legatus managed to defeat an army of 20,000 men with less than a full legion. Uh, and actually, based on reading that, my lore, my lore skill has increased. So maybe this is kind of in the vein of a game like Morrowind, where reading different things can increase skills. Maybe lore is the only skill that can be increased by reading. I'm not sure. Okay, well we can make our way out of here. And we're being called now by this gentleman. is Fing. This is the man we are apprenticed to. Fing came to Terran with a cow of caravan two decades ago. Nobody knew where he came from and why, but he had the bitterness of a man soured by the memory of the, the life he lost. He was well versed in languages and antiquities, but the town already had a lore master. Fortunately for Fing, the lore master fell sick and passed away, despite the best efforts of local alchemists, who was quite puzzled by the symptoms. Fing became the new lore master, and even earned the favor of Lord Antidus after discovering several of Daraton's relics. Okay, the uh, Roman-inspired names are, are causing me to trip and fumble here, but I will I will do my best, and we'll go ahead and talk to Fing. Did you finish translating that scroll? Never mind, I have a better job for you. Someone at the inn has a trinket they want me to look at. Why don't you handle it? Just remember that what I taught. Just remember what I taught you. Take a good look. 
show some excitement, then tell them that it's a very valuable artifact that's worth a lot to the right collector, and that they were right to bring it to us and to learn its true value. Wait for the words to sink in and then ask for a hundred Imperials to research it further. Okay, so Fing is, uh... <laughs> if you notice when we picked background, there was also a grifter um, background. I think Fing might be maybe multi-classed here. And our choices are what if it actually is a valuable artifact? Question a trinket? Or I will go there right away. I want to find out what I do if it is actually valuable. Let's find out how deep the rabbit hole goes on this guy's uh, treachery. Artifacts. I've been stuck in this shithole you call a town for the last 20 years. Year after year, farmers and diggers bring me everything they find, hoping for a lucky break. They bring me bla bracelets, cheap pottery, rusty old locks, pipes, chamber pots, even deformed skulls. The sad truth is, this town doesn't have anything of value, which is probably the only reason why Antitus is still in charge. Okay, so our lore master career is not off to a stellar, stellar start here. Apparently there's nothing of value, uh, even in this town, according to... Uh, Fing, who seems less than trustworthy anyway. Uh, we're going to ask him why he stays. Weren't you listening? Every year, peasants bring me junk to appraise. Good business. Okay. We're going to ask him. He said he had a trinket. I think the word map was mentioned. Go and take a look. If it's something good, bring it to me. And I will go there right away, Master. Oh, and I've kind of, I guess, teleported there. The inn is full of guests. After spending weeks and sometimes months on the road, they have an unhealthy appetite for cheap wine, stove-cooked meals, and women willing to share their beds for a few coin. It sounds like Rome to me. You navigate through the busy crowd and go upstairs. The trader's room is easy to find. Are you the lore master I sent for? Ask Gracious, letting you in. Uh, and our response is, I am Gaius, Master Fing's apprentice. Should my master's attention be required, I'll send for him. Where is the artifact? Gracious responds, right here. Gracious hands us a scroll. You open the scroll carefully and study it for a few minutes. It looks like an ordinary map depicting a temple. There is an old seal at the bottom. The name on the seal is Thor Agath. And we're going to go through our spiel as taught by Master Fing. It is a very valuable artifact that's worth a lot of money to the right collector. You were wise to bring it to us to learn its true value. Gracious. And what might this true value be? Gracious tries to sound indifferent, but it's obvious that Fing's simple formula has worked its magic. For someone who's interested in the High Lord's artifacts, it could be worth thousands. I'll have to study the map further, of course, to determine what its history and value is. Please forgive this uh, uneducated traitor, Master Gaius, but who are the High Lords? I will be presenting this map to Lord Antidus tomorrow, and I'd like to impress his lordship with some bits of knowledge. According to legends, the High Lords were our allies in the war between the Glorious Empire and the Ruthless Quantari. While their nature is debatable, most lore masters agree that it was definitely supernatural. This map bears the seal of Thorangoth, or Toragoth, as he was also known. And what is the significance of this seal? We're going to go for a persuasion feat here. Thoragoth's title was the Artificer. He built many machines, but most were destroyed during the war or lost after. Convenient. There are many people who hope that some caches have survived and can be recovered. They collect and study Thoragoth's documents looking for clues. That's why we want to be absolutely certain that this seal 
that makes the map so valuable isn't a fake. It might be very embarrassing for you otherwise. Unless, of course, you insist that... And our persuasion attempt has failed uh, miserably. It doesn't look like a fake one to me. I'm, I'm sure it's the genuine article, but we want to be certain. Do we not, Master Merchant? We do, we do. Please take the map and study it properly. Uh, there is something else I'd like you to look at. You seem very knowledgeable. He pauses and raises and reaches inside his sash. I found it where I found the map. He gives you a small object. It's a metal sphere with grooves on its surface. I'll study it with Master Fang. Now, uh, about the money. I'm sure you know what the standard fee is. Do you take me for a fool? I'll pay when the research is completed. <sighs> I'll see you in the morning. And we'll return to Master Fang. Uh, dialogue is, is well written. I think the dialogue is well written. This is obviously a, a first quest, but... Uh, so far, so good. In a game like this, uh, good dialogue writing is extremely important. Uh, I'm pretty immersed in the, in the story so, so far. Uh, looks like we'll stop and speak with the innkeeper. You're about to leave when the innkeeper stops you. Another um, guest is in need of your services, Master. He is a prospector. Would you be kind enough to take a look? And our choices are to say sure or not right now in return. I'm the inquisitive sort. Uh, Master Fing might be mad that we're delayed, but this might lead to an opportunity for ourselves. Prospector. The innkeeper sends one of the slaves to get the prospector. It's a man with sun-darkened skin, unkept hair, and a heavy beard. His faded, worn-out clothes are still covered with the road dust. He opens his bag and takes out a dozen carefully wrapped items of various sizes and slowly removes the dirty rags protecting them. You browse through his treasures, gears, pottery, half-burned scrolls with faded, no longer decipherable letters, glass jars with strange liquids. Anything you want to buy? asks the prospector anxiously. I'm embarrassed to admit, but I find myself without sufficient funds to pay for a comfortable stay. Although I'm sure that some of these artifacts are bound to fetch a high price. I mean, just look at this beauty. He picks up a rusted cylinder with a small spiral groove. The very definition of a mysterious device. From a wondrous artifact, no doubt. What do you think, Lore Master? Uh, we're going to go with our lore skill here. Uh, our lore persuasion attempt earlier failed. Uh, and this is just based on lore, so we'll see uh, if we're more successful with this one. It's called a worm, and it's missing a gear that goes with it. It was a common device. The prospector sighs and unwraps yet another artifact, revealing a charred skull. The skull of a magi. The power still burns through him much like it did when he was alive walking the earth and battling demons. When the nights are dark, it glows softly, keeping the demons at bay. Um, our choices are another lore check, and I think I will go with my lore skill. That's my strong suit. It does have the magic, but it's dangerous and will kill you if you keep it. Stay away from anything that glows in the dark. Sound advice. Why? The old magic is like fire. Fire can keep you warm, cook your food, and help you forge weapons and tools. But it can also burn down your house or a forest. The moment you lose control, which we don't have to begin with, not anymore. Uh, I have a special charm that keeps me safe. The prospector shows you a strange amulet. His face lit with eagerness and greed. We'll take a look. You turn it over in your hands, thoughtfully. A 
adorned with beads and engraved with ruins. It appears to be a ceremonial bowl of some sort. Strangely wrapped. But that isn't unusual for artifacts of the old empire. Who knows what arcane forces have been unleashed on it. Two small metal drums are affixed to the underside. Too awkwardly angled to be supported. To be supports for the bowl. You wrap one with the knuckle and listen. Hollow. Reservoirs, perhaps. Containers of sacred liquid for the bowl. You are unsure, but you keep your expression carefully neutral. It wouldn't do for the punters to see you un to see your uncertainty. Unprofessional. And we also have another check for our streetwise skill, which I didn't put. If I'd known this was going to be this way, I would have put some points into that. But I'm going to go ahead and try for another skill check with streetwise. And it's obviously a failure. Um, so we can see already in this game, your, your general skills, your conversation skills come into play over and over again. Um, which I find, I find interesting. This is, uh, this is exactly how I pictured the game. Uh, before starting it. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, so our, our streetwise attempt was a failure as we, we pretty much lacked the skill for it. Junk. The very fact that I'm standing here before you should attest to the quality of this charm. And we will go back and retreat. How much do you want for it? 500. And you should consider yourself lucky I'm willing to sell it. The fact that I'm standing here before you should attest to the quality of this charm. Uh, a little repetitious, but that's okay. Trading, again, not a skill we put points into. Um, I should have thought maybe better of diversifying my skills when I when I made my character. But like I said, this is a blind playthrough, so we're kind of stuck with what we have. And our trading skill. Nobody in this town will pay 500 for it. So you can either starve to death or sell it to me for 300 And you should consider yourself lucky that I'm willing to buy it. And that is a failure. The jewels alone are worth at least 300 There's no way I'm letting it go for less than 500 And we only have uh, 246 as we can see here, so we'll have to think about it. And we would have had to think about it even for 300 because uh, we lack the financial means to do otherwise. Innkeeper. You do have the money, don't you? Asked the innkeeper, watching the exchange with interest. The only reason I'm letting you stay on credit is because you promised to buy that junk. I better see some money soon, or I'm kicking you out. And I believe that is the innkeeper to the prospector, not to us. I, I'm hoping. Wasn't made exactly clear. And we will return to Feng here. How did it go? I got the map, but the trader refused to pay up front. I got this sphere. Th I got this sphere, though. Hand the map and the sphere to Feng. Refused to pay? What do you mean, refused to pay? <sighs> I try to teach you, but your skull is too thick. Nothing gets through. Fing looks at the map. The seal looks real. I'll take a better look tonight and let you know in the morning. As for the sphere, it's just a bead from some necklace. He throws it at you. You receive the sphere. You gain a new insight which could be used to increase your skills. And our only option is to leave and rest for the night. Well, guys, that gives us our first steps into into the Age of Decadence. Um, interesting little fetch quest. I like the way they I like the way they played it, though. I like the way that the so many different skills were able to play a role in the conversation and to alter the outcome of of just that initial portion of the game. Um, from what I understand, this game has extremely difficult combat but combat is not a necessity of the game um, that your conversation and persuasion skills your your characters uh, background type skills play a significant role in in how the game plays out and leaning on those and depending on those skills um, is really what's going to what's going to make or break your character 
um, in the long run. We'll see if that assumption is correct. That's, that's the assumption that I've come to, the educated guess that I've come to by the limited reading I've done about the game. Uh, but I'm going to wrap up part one of the Let's Play. Uh, went a little long, longer than I wanted to go, but depending on how the flow of the game is, that's just how the length of the videos is going to go. Um, but you guys, make sure to tune in to, to the next part. Make sure to tune in to part two. I think this is a this is going to be an interesting journey um, in what, what's seeming to be an interesting game world so far. So you guys take it easy, and uh, I will see you next time around.